Oh, I'm responding to a very old video, um, but the user still is making videos, so maybe you'll see this ice is melting. It was just a related video I decided to watch. Philosophy as a neurosis, I think, is very interesting because I think when you study philosophy as the quest for truth, it does look like a neurosis. Why do we prefer the truth, especially when so many Western philosophers cannot innately justify the truth and feel that it's more obvious that lies are beneficial, at least in the short term, and so we would have to demonstrate something about uh, the viability of, of desiring the truth. For me, it, once you define philosophy a certain way and then use that definition to find out that philosophy is just a neurosis, you, you have a trivially, you know, you've reduced philosophy to absurdity and therefore you should start over. That is not the definition. You don't need a definition that leads to a self-contradiction uh, or an absurdity. So, is there an alternate definition that's acceptable for philosophy? Well, I believe that the best definition really is a, a, a philosophy. Philosophy taken as a noun is a worldview. It's the way you view the world and interact with the world. You know, I've been debating with people about philosophies of, of creatures and, 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 and you know, implicit philosophies. For example, that you might have an animal that is nowhere near able to state its philosophy, but it lives, it has a worldview, and so we could uh, picture of what that worldview is and get a picture of that animal's philosophy, possibly just built into its neurology. Maybe it has no, you know, flexibility in the individual uh, to have a different philosophy. You know, I mean, ticks have a parasitic philosophy, that's that. Okay, so if philosophy is really about worldview, uh, and that is about how you live your life, then obviously there's a reason we are... Uh, interested in it. And if, if we're compulsively interested in it, there's a reason for that too. It's the same reason we're compulsively interested in things having to do with reproduction and hunger. You know, we're compulsively driven to get food every once in a while and water. And there's reasons for this because it is the survival which ultimately um, justifies and or motivates these things. If you don't value survival, you can't value those things. But the DNA or the system is somehow set up that, as individuals, it's built in for us to appreciate these things which indirectly relate to survival. Sometimes we end up appreciating them more than survival themselves. And it's only the intellect that has given us a glimpse into the fact that, oh, wait, if you just pursue your, your lust as if it's the whole of the world, you might actually do worse. Uh, finding a mate and reproducing. So intellectually, we could say, oh, well, we'll mitigate these things. But if we forget what's what, we always come back to these secondary urges that we get, these compulsions. So the issue with insanity and, and negative compulsions, addictive compulsions, is that we develop compulsions that are bad for us. That is tricky because it's hard to know when something's bad for us. It might be good, bad for a while, but a learning process that in the end leaves us stronger. Still, if we find something that's a compulsion that is, is evidently bad for us, then that's when we apply these negative uh, frames into uh, what this compulsion is about. It's not that it's compulsive alone. Okay, yes, compulsion is dangerous enough that we can make that approximation. Just find out that it's compulsive and be suspicious. But if you find out it's compulsive because, oh, your body needs nutrients every once in a while, so compulsively it wants to eat, okay, that's different than compulsive eating when you keep eating after you don't need it. So, if you're, in other words, if you're satisfying legitimate survival needs, we though it's similar in kind, and I would say a compulsion, it's not the same as when we start talking about compulsiveness when you do the action beyond your need, you know, when you're a sex addict and you're compulsively seeking sex well beyond, you know, um, you know, any justification that would, that would come to a material, hey, you really need to do this to survive, and yet, uh, psychologically, you may. Um, it's hard to get your finger on and impossible to finally say which are the healthy compulsions, which are unhealthy. But, you know, there's also areas where this, uh, the distinction works pretty good because, it's, you know, doing heroin rather than uh, productive work and feeding your family, that, that's destructive. Okay. Anyway, um, that's my answer and defense of philosophy, or rather definition of philosophy by which... Uh, it is not, by definition, absurd.